What is up my social climbing friends? It's Dustin and I am back with another video. I actually filmed this video once and I was watching it back and I was just like, I do not like the way this video turned out. So we're gonna give it a go again and see how it turns out. Off gate, I do wanna apologize for the lack of videos recently. I have been doing a whole lot of stuff concerning work and I had a whole issue with my car that I had planned on making a rant video about. I don't know if I'm gonna do it or not, but we will see about that. I do plan to post videos every single Saturday. So from here going forward, there will be at least one video on my channel a week, and that will be on Saturday. If there's a video between Saturday and whatever, it's just extra. It may not be a true crime video or a missing persons or an unsolved case because you just never know what you're gonna get with me. However, I do want to go ahead and jump into this case. This case is about Christopher Mittendorf and Christina Branham. This is somewhat of an old case. This happened in 2006. These two have been missing for quite some time now and there has not been a whole lot of information and leads that would indicate that this is going to be solved anytime soon. However, you guys know that I always say that it only takes one person to crack a case. It only takes one person to shed light on something that may actually lead to solving a case. So that is my hope with this video. I do want to say also that if you have not watched my Kiana Galvin video that I posted, please go watch that. That video, I don't know, that is going to be the case out of all the cases that I've researched and looked into that is going to bother me until there's some kind of information that's brought forward that gives this family closure because again the mom in that case just I don't know something spoke to my heart about her someone in the family a family friend did reach out to me and they thanked me for watching that video so if you guys are watching this that means the absolute world to me I know that I was not going to get a whole bunch of like clicks on that video but for what I did if it helps in any way shape or form that is what my aim was with that video and you guys I know that I'm not looking in the viewfinder because I'm having to use my phone because my camera is like kind of jacked up right now and it's getting on my nerves however let's just get into this case about Christopher Mendorf and Christina Branham from what I have seen on the internet these two were actually very happy together they dated six months before they actually moved in together the two Christina Christina and Christopher both live with Christopher's mom in her apartment in Hardin County, Tennessee. And they were just two young people that were in love that like to spend a lot of time together. Both Christina and Christopher both went missing on July 27, 2006. They had went to the mall. They had bought some clothes. They were just hanging out, chilling, just doing their thing. And they went home and they left the clothes that they bought and everything that they purchased at the mall at their apartment and they have never been seen since. I do want to give you some visual characteristics of these two so if you see them because they may actually be alive nobody knows just to like jog your memory or if you see someone that may resemble them it may actually lead to something. I watch so many of these true crime videos and things like that and they do not put a lot of information regarding what these people look like and their characteristics and things like that. I think that that is important if you're gonna make a video about a case, I think that you should get visual stimulation because that is how the mind works. You never know what could trigger a memory or anything like that. So I wanna give you a little bit of information about Christina and then I'm gonna give you some information about Christopher. Both of them are classed as endangered and missing. So that would mean that there is no information that would indicate that they're dead. So that's the number one thing I wanna drive home here. They may actually still be alive. Christina was born on December 30th, 1988. She was 17 at the time of her disappearance. Christina was five foot two, around 150 pounds and she had brown hair and brown eyes at the time of her disappearance. You guys know that that can change. It has been quite some time since this happened, so keep that in mind. I'm going to post some pictures for you guys to see what she looked like at the time of her disappearance, as well as the age progress photo to around the time now of what she may possibly look like. Christina's nickname was Chris, kind of like Chris Jenner, and she had pierced ears. Christopher was born June 20th, 1985, and he was 21 at the time of his disappearance with Christina. Christopher has light brown hair and blue eyes. He wears contacts and he has a scar somewhere between his forefinger and his thumb, so somewhere right here. It didn't indicate to me on which side of of which side of his body this was on 
So I don't know that detail, but there's definitely some kind of scar between somewhere right in here. They are both listed as missing from Hardin County, Tennessee. Now these two were described as being very happy together. Like I said, I've seen reports on the internet that they were married. I've seen reports that they were just engaged. I was not able to verify if they were married or not. So for the contingency of this video, we're just gonna assume that they were boyfriend and girlfriend because I've seen so much between message boards and articles that I found on the internet. I do not know what is true at this point. So both Christina and Christopher lived with Christopher Mittendorf's mother, Cheryl, and they just got along great from what I've seen on the internet. They lived together. They went shopping on this day back in July of 2006. They apparently went back to their apartment. The things that they had purchased at the mall were left there and Cheryl, Christopher's mother, came home to find just the things that they had bought left there with no sign, no trace of where these two had went. There was no note saying, hey, we're going to do this. We're gonna be back. Later, there was nothing to indicate where they had went or what they were doing. Here's where the story bends just a little bit. Cheryl, Christopher's mother, found some things that may have allegedly belonged to this guy, Eddie Balgus, and I hope I'm not butchering that name. And this guy in this area in Tennessee was allegedly very into crime, doing illegal activities. There was a lot of speculation that he may have something to do with this. This is unconfirmed, but Allegedly, there was some things in the possession of Christina and Christopher that may have belonged to this Eddie guy. His nickname was Eddie the Bad Egg Balgus. Now, if that tells you anything, if somebody is calling you a bad egg, I don't know if that's an indicator to you, but that definitely throws up red flags for me. And the very crazy thing about this guy, he was eventually murdered by his wife, Shannon. I believe she shot him three times. There was a whole episode of Snap that was dedicated to this. And there are so many forums on the internet about these two and how it may actually involve her knowing something with what happened with Christina. I do not really want to get into that because like I said, there is so much speculation and I have seen so many nasty comments on the internet about this case in particular with him being murdered. Uh, I do want to say that if you were going to leave a comment speculating, that's fine. You guys know that I encourage debate here on my channel. I do not really filter my comments. However, if you do have a strong opinion about something, I ask that you please be respectful to all parties involved because this does not just involve you. If you have a certain feeling that other people that are involved may not, just be respectful. If you were in the parent's shoes of a missing person, how would you want people to talk to you? How would you want people to look at things that are being said on the internet? How would you feel? Just keep that in mind. Please be respectful of one another in the comments because I have seen so many true crime videos where people get really, really nasty. And that's just really not called for. These videos are here to help spread the message and get the word out about people that are missing. So five days after the disappearance of Christina and Christopher, their car, a green geo prism was found. It was 1994, I believe. And there was a cell phone that was left inside and some other things that were not really of any value to the police to help find them. With the cell phone, I did read, and it's not confirmed, that the police dialed the last number they hit redial and the number actually called, I think, Christopher's grandfather. I do want to note that the car was found 50 to 60 miles away from where these two actually lived. Their car was found in Lawrence County. So that is quite a big distance and quite a big trek. What would actually take these people to Lawrence County. That is quite a drive. 50 or 60 miles is easily a 45 minute drive. And I drive like really, really fast. So I don't know what necessarily took these two over there. There are reports that these two were seen getting into a white car and driving off. However, this is unconfirmed. There are also other reports that these two have been seen as far away as Oklahoma. And these two are also unconfirmed. I do have here on my notes highlighted that Cheryl's mother does believe that this Eddie guy did have something to do with this. And although it's not confirmed, we can't rule it out. I do wanna get into the theories about this case. There are quite a few, so I'm gonna only bring up the ones that I think that may be relevant to this. A lot of people believe that these two may have actually just started their life over and just went away. However, usually in cases like this, 
after some period of time, it has been so long, 2006 was what, 12 years ago, I would think that they would show up. Now, I could absolutely be wrong with this. There are cases of people that just decided to start their life over and they show up 20 years later. Do I think this is a plausible theory? Absolutely. These two were young. Maybe they just wanted to start their life fresh and move on and just do something new and get away from what they were used to. Totally something that could happen. Then there's the theory with this Eddie bad egg guy. Could he have murdered them because there's allegedly things that were in the possession of these two and I've read that there was a possible drug deal that went wrong. Absolutely. However, when the person that may have committed a crime is deceased, there's not really much you could go on. There's not really much you can do unless something is found that would indicate that. There has absolutely been nothing found that would indicate that any of this stuff happened. They just literally disappeared without a trace. And you guys, I am so incredibly sorry for the cars that are running by my house. Like, I can't control that. I've also seen a theory somewhere online that, that they may have picked up a hitchhiker and then something bad happened to them. This is totally plausible. This could have totally happened. These two were young. Maybe they were too trusting of someone. Maybe they let someone in their car that they should not have let in their car and something went south and totally wrong. However, from what I've seen, there has been nothing in the car that would indicate that there was any kind of struggle. There was no DNA that would link anyone to like any kind of like attacking or anything like that. It's the things like this that absolutely just drive me crazy. It's just like, I do not understand how two people can just go missing. I do believe in my heart of hearts, and this is just my own personal opinion from what I've read and everything. I do think that possibly this Eddie guy did have something to do with this. And if he did, there's just really no way of knowing what actually happened or transpired unless someone comes forward. And if you are watching this and you have something weighing on your mind and you, you know something that could lead to this family, these families getting closure, I implore you to do the right thing and come forward and just help these families find the closure that they deserve. That is my aim with all of this, with these videos that I'm making. I just want it to get in front of just one person that can shed light on a situation that may not have been covered. Just something that can help. But you guys, this is the strange disappearance of Christina and Christopher, and I want to know what you think about this. I will link some sources down below for you guys to read some stuff that I've read. Some of it may be included in this video, some of it may not, because again, I don't want to like totally misconstrue a story. My aim is to get the story out there and in front of people and get people talking about it, especially with these like cold cases like this. This has been such a long time since these people have been seen and I just think that these families deserve closure in some way, shape, or form. But you guys, I hope that you have a great Saturday and I will see you on my next video. Bye guys.